Hi everyone, welcome to the X Fight Series 32 press conference. And joining us here tonight is the top six fighters in the Hex 32 card. Firstly, sitting here with us tonight is Australia's top tier welterweights, Matt, the Viper Vale, and the Jonathan, the Captain Nicolette, looking for redemption, embarking on the same narrative, emerging themselves back through the number one contender in the welterweight division. Our co-main event entails two New South Wales fighters, Jarrett, the wild man Wilbraham, taking on George Magos in uh, Australia's most competitive division, being the featherweight division. And of course, our main event of the evening, we have global superstar Cynthia Calpleo, first fighter of the UFC, coming up against local favourite Lisa, the Savage Kiriaku, in the women's flyweight division. This fight will be viewed around the world on the global stage. And I'll pass it up to you, Frank, the voice pants. Beautiful. Thank you, Ryan. Hello, everybody. Michael Chevello alongside Frank Barker will be your host on Saturday Night Live Worldwide for X Fight Series number 32. And uh, as Ryan said, these three fabulous main events of the night, including two championship fights, as uh, we have an international star studded card. Frank, I'm really looking forward to this one. In particular, I want to talk first of all about this main event because it's uh, Cynthia Calvillo coming all the way from the USA. She's been in town for almost a week now, taking on Lisa Kiriaku. I need to ask you straight off the bat, Frank, as I always do, I put on the spot your thoughts on who wins this main event contest for the flyweight strapping Saturday night. Yeah, that's a that's a, a tough question to answer. And I can't really give you a prediction on the outcome, but I can give you a prediction on what the, the numbers say. What do the numbers and, say? Look, I mean, without a doubt, we know Cynthia's history. I mean, it's without a doubt. She's, she's been mixing it up at the top. Uh, tier athletes in her division for a while. She actually was top three in 2020. And she's got, she's, you know, she's, she's here in Australia fighting in the main event against Lisa. And she's, you know, I, I would imagine that she has a lot to prove. She's going to maybe make the UFC maybe eat those words a little bit and, and think that maybe her, she should, her place should still be in the UFC. She brings a lot of power uh, to MMA. There's no doubt about it. Her record speaks volumes. Her wrestling, her striking, her grappling on the ground, her scrambling, her ability. Her, her, her conditioning is, is outstanding. And she's going to be leaning on all of that experience against Lisa. Can Lisa stop all that? Does she have the tools to do that? And look, just watching Lisa's record over the past you know, couple of years, the way she's developed as an athlete as well, and she's at the peak of her, her abilities right now. Her striking is very pinpoint, very accurate, and Cynthia's got to watch that too. I mean, her, her wrestling and her counter-wrestling is amazing, and her jiu-jitsu. So right now we're going to see, in my opinion, I think we're going to see the best Lisa Kiriaku ever, and she's going to really need to lean on all of those against experience of Cynthia Kabila. So for me, it's, it's going to be a tough one to predict, but all we can tell is it's going to be an incredible fight. I can't wait to see these ladies throw down the main event. So Cynthia, let me pose the first question to you here. Uh, when this fight was announced, you're traveling all the way from the US for this fight halfway across the world. There was messages on forums on, and, and socials. Why is Cynthia taking this fight? Is it a road back to UFC for her? Can you answer that question? Is this meant to be a ticket to return to the UFC for you. Is this why you took this fight? Yeah, absolutely. Um, obviously, I've heard of Hex. They produce a lot of UFC fighters. So um, I was, you know, I took on the opportunity when they told me I would do a main event title fight. So as I had to take it out, uh, take it up. That way I can uh, get back, you know, to the UFC or whatever organization, whether it be the PFL. But right now, the UFC, I'm, I'm hoping to get back there. And I just want to find the biggest stage in the world because I know I'm one of the best in the world. There's also been people online saying that you're almost looking past Lisa in that you think it may be easy pickings on Saturday night to beat Lisa, who has never been in the UFC and is hoping to get there. Is it true that you think that she's going to be easy pickings on Saturday night that you'll get past her without too many hassles? Um, honestly, absolutely not. I take every one of my opponents very serious, um, as everyone should. You should always train as if whatever your next fight is, the toughest opponent you have. So, um, you know, I've trained really, really freaking really, really hard for this, especially to make, you know, five round fight and I want to get back to the top. So I took this fight serious. I'm expecting her to be the best that she's ever been and I'm ready for it. From having done your homework on Lisa, of course, and studied her videos, is there anything about her fight style that uh, you've got to be particularly careful of or that you've specifically trained for? 
um, you know, she's just really tough. She's young. She's, she's coming up. So I'm expecting her to, you know, just give it everything she has. She wants to get to the top, but she has to get through me, and it's not going to happen. Okay. I guess the uh, the burning question here is a prediction. How do you win on Saturday night? When does it happen? How does it happen? Second round, TKO or submission. TKO or submission, second round. So early night here at the Melbourne Pavilion, says Cynthia Calvillo in our main event on Saturday night. Lisa's shaking her head here. Lisa, grab that mic. She on? We are on. Did you ever get the feeling on socials, on what Cynthia has been saying, that she was looking past you, that she was considering you as, you know, not a tough opponent on her way perhaps back to the UFC? Oh, for sure. Our experience levels are very different, obviously. She's very, very experienced over me. I'm just at my peak now, but I believe I'm at the top. I've fought to very hard opponents. You know, my last fight in the road to UFC, if I didn't get knocked out by that opponent, I don't seem to be getting finished very easy. You've studied tape of Cynthia. We all know Cynthia's reputation. We've seen her fight for years. She's been consistently fighting top tens of the world for a long, long time. Is there any red flags in what she does that you need to be really careful of, or do you think you handle her effectively on Saturday night? Huge respect to Cynthia. Great uh, fighter, good striking, wrestling, grappling, and full of respect for that. I also believe in myself, and I believe, as I said, I'm going to have an answer for everything that comes to me that night. The more precious someone brings me, the more geared up I kind of get. So I'm keen. She says second round, TKO or submission finish. How do you plan to get the strap on Saturday night? How is it going to end in your favour? Look, I've been working my hands. I've got that knockout power that hasn't been unlocked yet, but I'm planning to unlock it Saturday night. Give us a prediction here, Lisa. When do you unlock it? When do you pull the trigger on those hands? Uh, let's say about third round. Third round. A bit of a shadow beforehand. Cynthia, you believe she can clock you on the jaw with those hands? I mean, she can try. I haven't been clinging like that yet, so um, she can go ahead and try, but I've definitely faced some of the hardest hitting uh, fighters in the world, so no, we'll see. Frank, who wins a takedown war between these two? That's a really tough question because Lisa has proven to be able to do that. I mean, she's such a strategist when it comes to, you know, really managing her time. Um, in the cage, I've seen it over and over again. She's just her timing of her takedowns is just uh, fantastic, and it's it's a real problem for a lot of people in the past. But whether she can, you know, lean on that strategy successfully against someone with the experience that Cynthia has, and then especially going to five rounds, I'm hoping this goes deep into the fifth, man. Like I'm hoping this is going to be a slug fest and a scramble fest and real test of, of wheels and go all through five rounds. I know the girls don't want to hear that, but this is an awesome opportunity. I can't wait. Cynthia, is there any chance this goes five rounds? No, not at all, but I'm ready for it. So if I'm a betting man, how much of my stake here doesn't go five rounds? Am I betting the house or am I betting like 100 bucks? No, bet the house. <laughs> bet the house. Does it go five rounds? Lisa, would I bet the house on it not going five rounds in your opinion? Yeah, let's bet the house. So someone's going to get a finish here, Frank, in our main event on Saturday night for the championship between Cynthia Calvillo and Lisa Kiriakou. Someone's going to get a finish. Second round, says Cynthia. Third round, says Lisa. I like that your fence sitting a little here, going by the numbers tonight. The data doesn't lie, Michael. And the, the big question is, these both these girls are prepared to go for five rounds, no doubt about it. And they've both got excellent skills right across that important triad of MMA, which is the striking, grappling, and wrestling. And it's going to be absolutely awesome. And might just come down to a test of wills in the end, the conditioning. Let's see, Albers. Cynthia, again, you've studied the video of Lisa. You know her strengths. You also know her weaknesses. If you had to pick out one particular weak point you believe that Lisa has, what would it be? What's the chink in the armor do you believe of Lisa? Probably her, her wrestling and her grappling and in comparison to what I'd have to offer. Same question to you, Lisa. You've studied Cynthia. What's the weak spot, the chink in the armor of Cynthia Calvillo? There's a very main fact here, that, which I'm actually not going to point out, but I'm keen back to the game plan. But a bit of my strike is going to do a bit of damage to something that she likes. Something so, she likes. Lacks. Lacks. <laughs> Lacks. Something can be improved. We'll see. Can't give that game plan away. Okay. So there you have it, folks. Three rounds, says Lisa. Two rounds, says Cynthia. Wherever you're watching around the world, what are your predictions? Let us know online, hashtag HexFightSeries32 or HexFS32. Let us know on social media. Do you predict Cynthia Calvillo? Do you predict 
Lisa Kiriakou. Let's go to that line now to uh, Jared Wilbraham. Take you on the champion, George Mangles. George, your first ever title defence. You won it in sensational fashion last time out. What do they always say, Frank? You're not a true champion until you've defended the title. Do you believe in that? Well, that's that's what they always say, and it's never, never, it's never easy, especially getting up to be to become the champion. That's just one set of skills, and staying the champion, man. All the top guys have always said that that is pretty true. Trying to stay at the top is is a, is an event on its own. So we'll see how it goes on Saturday night. George, since you had that gold around your waist, have you felt added pressure as the hex champion? Um. Yeah, I guess you can say that, but that's what I enjoy. I, I thrive under that pressure. I'm, yeah, I'm looking forward to, you know, like you said, defending my goal. I think that's when you solidify yourself as a champion, and that's what I'm going to do Saturday, Saturday night. Which puts more pressure on you, remaining undefeated or being the champion? Uh, probably both. I mean, they're both equally, um, you know, put big pressure on my shoulders, but as I said, that's what I enjoy. That's what I thrive on them. So, yeah, well, I'm going to uh, succeed in keeping my title and my title and my have to be straight. You saw Jared's fight last time against Sonakota Kakembo. What did you think of Jared's performance? Yeah, you know, Jared done what he had to do um, in four smart. Uh, it was a close fight. Um, yeah, look, it's not going to be that close against me on Saturday. Um, yeah, it's going to be one sided, and you guys have seen that. So by one sided, uh, are you tipping a fast finish of Jarrett? You finished most people pretty fast. Yeah, you know, took my last watch, you know, uh, I, as a pro at least, I've ever left the first round. So um, I'd like to continue that, but I think we're definitely going to be a dive inside team. Inside of two rounds. And uh, how do you think you do it? Um, I don't know. By any means, I guess I, I, I can beat him anywhere. I can, I can definitely beat him on the three. I can most definitely just beat him and, and get him out of it. So... Whatever holds there on the right, either way, it's going out. Confident words there from the champion, George Mangos. Uh, Jared, the challenger, very impressive last time against Simicade Kakembo. Um, I want to ask you the same question. You also saw George's championship fight. What do you think of George's performance? What do you think of George's career so far? Yeah, like, George has done well in the past. He's run through everyone in sport. Yeah. Um, I guess the fight with Justin, I feel he did well to survive the early rounds and good flashy finish. Uh, so, yeah, there's a lot of hype behind him. He's done a good job with the guys that's fought in the past, but I just don't think that they're on the level if I is about the case now. So, look, mm -hmm. we'll see what happens when uh, he gets thrown into the deep water and things start getting hard because the fight hasn't really been hard for him yet. Is it one of the plans here for you to try and take him to deep water or do you expect he can finish George early or finish him at all? Yeah, like I feel I can take him out early. Like I know I hit hard when I put it together right. So I'm just looking to go and do that, take him out. Um, but yeah, I'm ready to go. Like deep water, five rounds, I'm, I'm ready for that. But I really do want to finish in this spot. I really need a finish. So Jared, clear your shot. George is saying he finishes it within two rounds, most likely first round. Uh, he says he does it any way he wants to, that he beats you on the floor, he beats you on the feet. How do you beat him on Saturday night? Give us an answer here. Yeah, I think we're in down and um, somewhere towards the end of round two, I'll get the finish. Knockout. Knockout. I was talking to you uh, off stage earlier on. Those kicks have uh, improved out of sight. Is that the, uh, the potent weapon for Saturday night? Maybe the kicking arsenal? Yeah, I plan on using every tool I have. Just throw it all at him and see how it deals with it. Hmm. George, anything that you've seen of Jarrett that phases you, that is a red flag for you, that you particularly train to defend against? I mean, like I said, um, he's going to throw whatever he can at me. And he's done that in his past fights. He's, he brings a high pace and um, exciting fights. So that's, a, that's what I'm expecting. Um, I'm ready to go deep rounds and and survive um, those, those blasts and, you know, things throw everything at me. Um, yeah, that's what I think my wings that thinks and I'm going to weather that storm and, and get, get him out of them. Jared seems to think that you haven't really faced a challenge yet in your career. What are your thoughts on that? I think I did my last fight. Um, obviously, I, I did with all the rounds. I lost the first round and um, went third round. Probably I was losing two. Uh, I got to finish. So, yeah, I've definitely shown that I can overcome adversity or fight isn't, you know, just going my way and seeing my opponents. So, 
Um, hopefully, I don't have to pull the out of the bag again. But if I do, that's something I'll always be able to do is, is get the win no matter what. We'll see it in practice on Saturday night. But on paper, George, is Jarrell Wilbraham the hardest opponent you've faced yet or not? Yeah, I think he's the most um, well, well rounded to, uh, for sure. Like, say, Justin, for example, he was a heavy grapple and a missile. So I didn't have as much, like, I could just focus on like, those things. Um, Jared Green's, you know, he's a, he's a mixed martial artist. So I'm going to be careful everywhere. And, and yeah, I think he's the other, like I'd say, the most well rounded I've waiting on fate. Jared, last time Samakado right here talked to Big Gay. And he managed to close him down very effectively. I mean, the big game didn't translate to him inside the cage at the last Hicks show. Uh, George also talks a big game in a much quieter fashion, though, than Simicarde. Uh Who did you have more concern about facing, Simicarde or George Bandos? They're, they're both dangerous in their own ways. You know, I think um, Sanded. His kicking game is quite strong. He throws those front kicks up the middle. That was my primary concern when I was facing him. So it's a tough task to face him. Georgia mixes it up well, so it's hard to say really who's going to be the toughest fight, but I just, it doesn't really matter to be honest. I'm not really thinking too much about it. Just going in head first, taking all the thought out of it and just feeling it every step of the way. Hey, John and Mikkel, I just want to ask you quickly, what's your prediction in this one? You know both of these guys well. And, uh, I think the crowd wins this one, mate. It'll be a good fight. I hate it when they sit on the fence, Frank. I hate when they slide I don't think you sit on the fence. It's true. I mean, the boys, and this is gonna, look, I'm, I'm praying for a fight around like this. To see these boys at the top in this weight class fighting out for the title, I want to see all their skills on show. I want to see their chin. I want to see their fitness. I want to see the see... reality. Do you think it's going to go five rounds? I don't think so. L listen, Jarrell Wilbraham, look at his fight history. It's very difficult. to. It's a wild man. It's hard to hold him down. It really is. And he's so unorthodox. And he comes at you with weird angles. He really makes it scrappy. And George, he's he's a range of pillages every yes, single time. Yes, yes, yes. He has so many first round finishes. Look at his record. 10 and 0. That's incredibly impressive right across his career. But now we're right at the big time. Jared's right there, willing and ready to go. I, I can't wait to see this fight. It's going to be amazing. What are you smiling at? We like finishes here in Australia. I love it. You love, love it. it. Hey, you, I'm betting my house. You know I'm betting the house, Cynthia. All right? You said inside of two rounds. You know I'm betting the house. Yep. I like when they smile, Frank. Of course. Show you all that mean business. All right, let's go on to Johnny McAllen and the Viper McVale. Uh, Jono, this is a situation that you've never been in before. Coming off a loss by Tico last time out. How does that change the mentality? How does it change the mindset of John Mikolev approaching a fight, as I said, being a situation in your career you've never been in before? Well, I've got something more to prove now, you know. I've, everyone has has that thing to grab onto that I've lost, which has never been a part before. So um, I'm coming with a new fight that's never been seen, a new intensity. Matt, you've always been in an intense fighter. You know Jono very well. And a lot of people would say this is the perfect time for you to step up against Jono Mikolet after Jono just lost by TKO, that he may be ripe for the picking because after someone is finished for the first time, there are always question marks about them. Do you feel this is good timing for you to come up against Jono who was so rampant until that loss last time? Yeah, I think the way it's worked out is good. Uh, I wouldn't say... Uh, he's in a bad place coming off a loss. If anything, he's going to be more determined to to get that look because you don't want two in a row, even though that is what's going to happen for the uh, sorry break of limbs. But yeah, uh, it's a good match. We're, we're both ex-champions. I feel like uh, um, yeah, I want to get back to that position, so this is what's brought down. Determination can be either a strength in the cage, Matt, as you know, or it can be an enemy. In the cage, when, when you're determined, you can become so determined to for redemption, I suppose, that you can make mistakes and leave yourself open. Is that something that possibly you see July doing on Saturday night? Yeah, well, I think it comes down to experience as well. So uh, this will get my 18th fight. Um, and he's had been sitting in the fight. So we'll see how mature he is in the game, um, if he can hold it together. And yeah, it'll be testing him. As you said, you've had so many fights against so many class opponents. Where do you rank 
Jono amongst those opponents. We'd say top three, top five. Do you go to top ten? Where do you rank him? I wouldn't really deal with a number. I, I see Jono as the new age of uh, being in May Town kind of in the third. Uh, I've been around in the 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 scene, um, the sort of astrologic scene for so long that sort of four in one could. And a big dry skull, and now we've we got new challenges, which is awesome. And I'm motivated, about it, so let's go. So I know you're determined. I know you want to get a finish. I want to know when it's going to come and how it's going to come on Saturday night. Um, it, I think that it's up to Matt to, to make the mistake, um, but I think it's going to come in the second round and, and it's by my decision. What a mistake can make some of that. They'll expose it. Yeah, they'll expose hard. Second round says Johnny Mikulet. Uh, Matt, you said it was going to be uh, two losses in a row back to back for John O. How's it going to happen on Saturday? That's uh, going to end at the first or second round. Um, I'm back to my old ways. I'm back to feeling good, feeling healthy. Set. Um, I've been dieting for the last whole year, so I'm angry. <laughs> <laughs> I need to make someone pay for that. So I'm either going to strangle him or feel good, so I'll just knock them out. Is it a matter of too much experience? Uh, I think it's a big benefit when you look at it. Um, I don't think he's really seen a fighter like me, even though he thinks that he's versed uh, uh, opponents. He's just going to see a difference. You don't really know until you're in there. Hey, George Bagos, if you were a betting man, who's who you bet on between these two? Who's your money on? Don't be afraid. No. To be honest, um, I've never watched about fight. I only watched Jono's last five and now it's sort of, I'm not like a good position to pick. Thank God, huh? Who am I putting my money on on Saturday night? Well, I'm not going to tell anyone to put any money anyway. But I can tell you this. Cynthia told me to bet the house, man. You didn't see it. The house is already up on the market. I bet the house. How many houses do you have, Mark Well, One of them's up. Well, well, look, honestly, I mean, Matt, I mean, incredible career. 13 wins, 11 uh, finishes, nine knockouts, two submissions. I mean, the guy has just proven he is... I mean, his currency is, is high and he's on the way back and he's hungry and he's angry. So it's going to be impressive. Jono, rising star coming up. Yeah, he hit a bit of a speed bump in the last fight. But man, look, I've, I've shared the map with uh, Jono a few times and I know what kind of intensity he brings to the fight. I know how his wrestling and his jiu-jitsu is going. I know his strike, he's got to speak to his coaches. I mean, this is the, probably the best version of Jonathan McCabe that we're going to see. So it's going to be hard to pick a winner. But I can tell you right now, as you said before, Jono, that the fans are the, uh, the biggest winners in this, and, and this car top to bottom definitely proves that. So let's see what happens on Saturday night. Before we go to the floor for questions, uh, one more for our main event is here. Camera guys, which camera are we on out of these two? This one? Okay, first of all, Lisa, right down the barrel of that camera, I know you are gunning towards the UFC. Hexa sent over 40 fighters to the biggest organization on the planet. We are still sending them. We sent them last week. Never heard Sterling is there. Cody Haddon is there. They keep going in there. They all come from Hex. UFC is watching. Right down the barrel of that camera there, Lisa, send a message to UFC about what you're going to do to Cynthia and why they should be watching it on Saturday night and what's going to happen. I'm going to prove to the UFC why I deserve to be there. I'm going to beat an ex-UFC veteran and show that I'm the next big thing coming in the flyweight division in the UFC. It's my time now. Cynthia, down the barrel of that camera, send your message to the UFC because, uh, you know, a win on Saturday night could be the ticket back to the, uh, to the octagon. Well, I'm going to be ready to put on our show for you guys, and I'm going to be waiting for that call back. There it is. Both women want in the UFC. One's been there already in Cynthia Calvillo, known worldwide. The other one wants to get there. Who will get the championship belt of Hex on Saturday night, and who may get the call-up to the UFC should they win? Worldwide live on Combat Sports Network. Make sure you check it out. Follow us all on social media. Frank, take the microphone to the floor. We'll get some questions now from the floor for any of our six fighters, please. Uh, first question uh, for Jarrett Wilbraham. This is not the first time you've fought for this belt. Uh, the last time you fought this belt, you fought a guy who's now in the UFC. What's changed within yourself between the last time you fight clean spell and now? Uh, I had to wake up in the morning and Realize I made mistakes in losing that belt, and this whole time I've been fighting my way back to get my hands on it. So that belt's been in my vision the entire time. So I've really become a different person. 
I love open pose. I let myself get like angry, let my emotions get most of it. Um, I think I've come to a point where I'm no longer fighting with so much violence, but more really starting to understand myself and fighting with more clarity and just contentless. I spoke to you after your last victory that made it the number one contender for this title. And it was after your teammate Justin lost to George and you were shat. Are you coming into this fight to have been Justin Bay? Nah, that's not on my mind at all. But, um, that's in the past. Justin will move on the bet to bigger things. Um, but I, this, I'm just thinking of myself really and all the people that support me along the way. I haven't really been thinking about George. I haven't really been thinking about what's in front of me. I've just been living in the mind. It feels good. George, you're a man who shared realms with Justin Van Heerden and now you sit across from his teammate. Uh, do you believe Jabba Abraham was a better fighter than Justin Van Heerden? Um, I think they're pretty evenly matched. I think they're both, it's hard to say one's better than the other because they bring completely different skill sets. Um, the fight is violent and sad over Jarrett is going to be completely different to the fight with Justin. Um, they're both they're both dangerous. That's why Justin was fighting for this bill and was the number one guy in Australia. And that Jarrett's definitely dangerous as as you saw against Kekambo in his past fights. That's why he's he's number one contender now. Um, to say one's better than the other, I'm not sure. I don't share the train, training room with him, but um, they're both dangerous. Matt, uh, you mentioned how angry you are oh. heading into this fight. When was the last time you were this angry? That's a screen. I can't agree. Uh, but that's there. I, I'm not too sure. Probably this morning when I woke up, like, you know, 10, 2 a.m. to the Kesha flight. So, yeah, yeah. A lot of ambulance work. Uh, you mentioned putting John onto a two fight skid. Uh, you're a man who is bouncing back from that. The last fight was, uh, was a solid victory to getting back on track. What does that do to a fight? How has that reignited your hunger? Uh, different takes. One, you sort of look at that. And think maybe I was just a little bit off too. You go, ah, oh, something's not right. Here. So strip it, just hang back, look at it, see so you how know, you get better, and then you become your best self. So either way, this energy a bit of fire and good. To hold the time over plus on the shoot. I'll stick with Jared and George for now. Mine's very well. Being so young and undisputed, um, was good. And now defending the Hex featherweight title, it's last fight against Justin, the pressure was on Justin. Are you feeling pressure leading up to this one? Uh, yeah, always. Um, you know, regardless of other people putting pressure on me, I put pressure on myself to go out there and perform as well as I think I should. Um, yeah, so yeah, the pressure is on me as always, because I, as like, I, that's, how, that's what I like. And it, um, yeah, like every other time when the pressure is on me, I'm, I'm going to perform and yeah, I'm going to put me more work. Does Jared's unusual striking pace and timing present more of a difficult puzzle than Justin? Yeah, it's definitely, uh, definitely a different look that I've had to uh, against anyone I've had to fight previously. You know, but we had 12 weeks of prepare strength and um, it's going to be a puzzle that was all the second. Jared, having your girlfriend support you through this journey, how pivotal has she been in this lead up to this fight? God, man, it's. I couldn't do it without her, to be honest. Um, yeah, I haven't had to cook a thing. So. <laughs> Enough to pack my bag, just when I flew over here. So I'm just kicking back, playing Nintendo Switch and trying to... Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So after you've diced up some mangoes for your fruit salad, what are you playing to do like after a fire? <laughs> the same as that. Nintendo Switch. No, I was... That's a chime. There is he. Go by this. Yeah, talk. Yeah. With your experience fighting a young up in your do you think Joe Mac is used on your side? Or does your experience trump that? I guess I fight Smith brings um George, uh just aggression, just fitness, hard up. Yeah, and you look on the other side where it's just Wow, uh, being that is so wrong that the skill set comes in. But yeah, so I definitely think that's a thing that overrules as well with my condition at the moment. So it's a tedious one. Awesome, we think that was on six months. And Jono, 
having less experience than Vader. Do you think Vader to be underestimating me? I think it was definitely underestimated me. All of my emotions uh, can be all over the world, but have had way more experience than I have. So it's just another another time I've been late and just an experience that I keep coming in. So we'll see. We'll see come to or not. Got a question uh, for the main event. Uh, Lisa, it is your hunting town. You are the defending champion. However, a lot has been made of the city of experience. Do you feel like the underdog in this one? Oh, for sure. I've only been training for six years, fighting for five. Definitely the underdog by a lot, but I've become, come so far in such a short time. I've beat some good females. So, look, definitely the underdog. She's much more experienced, but I just feel like so much in myself with this and for my future in this sport. So, yeah, no. definitely very confident. How do you get that confidence and how do you prepare yourself to fight some of these big to the highest levels? Training with men and men only. Dude, my partners smash me every single day, multiple times a day. They're dudes as they should, but when I fight females, it feels like I'm, yeah, not not as hard. Let's just say that. Definitely hard, but when you've got these dudes that are like bashing you every day, yeah, it makes you mentally a bit tougher. <laughs> uh, you've been on the stage of one. Uh, you've fought for the road to UFC, but given some of the accomplishments, is this the most high stakes fight in your career? Uh, definitely my most high profile fight. I'd say the road to UFC fight, obviously, because that was for a contract that was quite high as well. This, but as I said, definitely my most high profile fight. Um, the one fight was obviously quite big as well, but yeah, you know what? Every fight's a big fight for me. It's getting me to the next step and where I'm meant to be. So thank you very much. Uh, set the uh, you're walking into the Belgian feast. Lisa's the hometown girl. She's the reigning defending champion. Uh, the crowd isn't going to be on your side. How are you going to deal with that? And when you're making that walk to the cage and there's people booing, how is that going to affect being that going? I mean, it's not the first time I've gone in enemy, enemy territory, so it won't be the last. Uh, you know, this is my job. I've been doing this for a lot of times. I'm not worried about it. You know, I expect the fans not to be on my side this time around, but I'm not worried about it. I'm going to win a well breath of fight. And with this being the first fight outside of the UFC, how important is it for you to make a save? It's, I mean, it's it's huge. You know, I, I, I truly believe I'm still one of the best in the world. So um, it was a hard hit for me when I, uh, you know, got cut. Unfortunately, I missed, um, you know, weight at straw weight. I'm kind of one of those in-betweeners. But um, I'm settling in great here at 125. I think this is where I'm going to stay for a long time. So I'm definitely going to be, you know, showing, showing off my best moves out there to make sure I get the... The eye of the UC again, let's show them that I'm a true professional. I will come back, I'll make the weight, and I'm finna win and be one of their, their best fighters, you know, best fighter on the planet. Awesome. Thank you very much. We will wrap up there. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for watching Around the World. We'll get all of our fighters front and center for official photographs right now, but that is all for our question time. And uh, once again, you can tune in live worldwide on Combat Sports Network at CSN on Saturday night from the Melbourne Pavilion for Hex Fight Series number 32. Calvillo versus Kiriaku in our main event. In fact, let's get those two ladies first of all. Front and centre, please. Cynthia and Lisa, head to head for the first time ever. Photographers, get your fingers on the button down the pool, please. Wait down there. Okay. This way? Uh, go around me. Are you? Yep. Go ahead. Do you know on? So this is Lisa and Cynthia head to head for the first time ever. Will it be and still or will it be and new? Between Cynthia Calvillo of the USA... And Australia's own Lisa Kiriakou. And face camera. Now that's a stare down. Cynthia Calvillo and Lisa Kiriakou. Hey, can we get the belt in Lisa's hands for one shot too, please? Thank you. Does the gold stay in Oz or does it go to the USA for the first time ever? Thank you very much, Lisa and Cynthia. George Mangos and Jarrett Wilbraham head to head for the first time. Go. Will it be and new for Jarrett Wilbraham? Will it be and still George Mangos? Head to head for the first time. Both men refusing to blink. I like it. Okay, guys, turn to camera. Mm -hmm. 
George with his belt. Let us know your thoughts online, folks. Hashtag Hex Fight Series 32, Hex FS 32. Who wins? George Mangos, does he continue his undefeated record or does Jarrett take the title? And finally, the Viper Matt Vale and John O'Mikale, front and centre. Yeah. Matt Vale saying it's going to be back to back losses for John O'Mikale. John saying he is coming back with a point to prove. And here they are, face to face for the first time ever. John O'Mikale could beat the sun in a staring contest. Look at that. And front of cameras. Once again, live worldwide on Combat Sports Network, Saturday Night Live from the Melbourne Pavilion. I'm Michael Chanello. Join me, Frank Barker, Samantha Richards. We'll see you Saturday Night Live for Hex Fight Series 32. Oh, that's super deep. That's a wrap. That's a wrap. Lisa, the